Hi everybody, are you ready to make the cutest ornaments ever? Val and I have been talking about a bird ornament for over a year and I reminded her the other day that we would be taping had she done the ornament <laughs> and an hour later she had this done and they are so cute. But she used this fabulous new fabric of hers. It's called Cantha Cloth and it's all of her prints from different collections that she's done. This is the black version, black and gray, and you can see the hand stitching. This is done in India. And so it goes through the two layers of fabric. And she has four different colors, the multicolored one, the black and gray, um, the pink magenta ones, and then the indigo ones. You know how she loves indigo. So I get to show you how to make these today. And I just learned a couple days ago and I've been making a whole bunch of them. So they're very easy and very fun. But I think what makes it work is there's two layers of fabric with this cantha cloth. And so if you were using regular cottons, I think I would put a some shape flex on the back because it will stabilize the fabric because you are sewing in and out little curves. So as you watch the demo today, then you can decide what will work best for you. Here is the pattern, not very complicated. And we've left a couple of little marks here and that's the opening. And that's, you're going to leave that open when you stitch around all of this. So the first thing you do is to take your fabric and you'll use a chalk pencil, or if it's light color, you can use a lead pencil. Right and, sides together. Oh yes, right, right sides together. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I went ahead and drew around all of these, and you can see I have several ready to get cut out on here, and I keep them pinned in place. Um, and then while they're still on this cloth, I go ahead and stitch around the bird. And I'm using a tighter uh, stitch. So instead of 12 stitches to the inch, I'm going up to 14 or 16 because I want these really close together because of the beak and the tail. Otherwise, I don't think that it, this would work very well and we've left a little open spot here. So once you've done this stitching, then you're going to trim around and it's a scant quarter that you trim. And I'm gonna show you what you do down here on the tail and you will do the same thing on the beak. It's still kind of pointy. I'm gonna trim that off, round it as much as I can because when this turns to the other side, all of that fib fabrics that's sitting out here beyond the stitching line has to go inside. So this is really important, the trimming. So I have one that I've turned now. And when you get to this point um, of turning, um, I'm using my little um, stick to push as much as I can. And because you've stitched really close together, you can really push it in there. I do have an old wood knitting needle that isn't real pointy on the end. And if I'm careful, I can kind of, I hold my fingers here and I can get more to push out. But I'm very careful using this. And the metal ones are too pokey. So, now I am ready to do the stuffing. And I start with a uh, small amount and I go up to the tail first. <laughs> and I push that little bit clear up there. And then I'm holding my fingers here. I'm pushing it so it goes clear to the end where the tail is. I don't want there not to be any stuffing there. And it's that's 
about how much it fills. So then I can put a bigger piece in right after it to hold it in place. And again, I'm using my finger and just pushing it up there. Now I would do the same thing with the beak. So I'm going to head for the beak here. And that wasn't too bad. Now, as I, there's the head right there with the beak too. So I'm putting a little bit larger piece in. And again, see how I'm using my finger to push it up in there? Gently push it. You know, I don't want this a real tight stuffing, more of a gentle touch. Um, there we go. So it's pretty easy from here on out. But I do want to show you how to sew it up. So we're going to get this one to that point. If you aren't excited yet, maybe you'll get excited when we stitch it up at the very end. I think I'm almost there. And I like to make sure that down here on the bottom, you know, I put enough, like I'm kind of pushing down there and now I've got a little hole in the middle. So I'm going to fill that little hole. There we go. And I like to work from uh, the, the front of the bird back because I want the hanging string to go in right here. And you want to have cut some string, heavy string, or you can use ribbon or like a shashiko thread. And I've taken an eight inch length of it and fold it in half like this. And then I tie a knot. So I have a knot there. And the reason I have the knot is that I'm going to push the knot and that string so they're right at the end. And the middle of the bird that you left to open automatically just turns under because it's an inside curve. Now I'm going to sew it and I have a single strand of thread and make sure you have tied a knot in the end of the thread before you begin. And I wanna take the first stitch on this side of the hanging string, then I'll come around and take another stitch really close. And that should hold that hanging, um, the hanger inside because you have uh, it knotted together. You know, I tested these to make sure that uh, it felt secure and it really did. So now my second stitch is probably an eighth of an inch over. They're really close together. And I pull it tight. I just put a little pin in there to hold those together while I'm, it's harder to do this when you're demoing because you're talking at the same time. So, and I want you to see, here's those two little folds that are coming together. I'm gonna hold from underneath so that you can see what I'm doing. And I just catch a little bit. And this is a whip stitch because it's going over the top of the, the seam. But it's gonna be nice and secure. So you'll want to find um, a thread that is fairly uh, neutral um, so that it doesn't show. I wouldn't do this with white thread on this blue. Although if I did it, then I could go around the whole bird and have white stitching around the whole bird, I guess. So, and I did find, um, as you can see from the, the back of that pink fabric, 
some of the stitches are pretty long and when the bird got cut out, um, there were places where the tail of a thread um, at this opening looked like it was sticking up. I just tucked it under. So you can just tuck under those threads as you go. So about three more stitches and we're gonna be done here. Then he can go on the tree with his friends. I just really like this. I think part of it is because it isn't that hard and you've got this great cloth that's already decorative to make it out of. You don't have to create it, but then, you know, if you want to create your own cloth, obviously you could, but um, I just thought this was a win-win with this Canva cloth. So I'm gonna have to have some of all of it. Now I'm ready to just tie my knot. And I always uh, tie two. And then I'm gonna show you what I do with the tail of the fabric. So I've tied my knots. I just put the needle back in for about a half inch like that. And so the tail of the thread is now inside the bird. Mm. And he's all ready to go to join his buddies up here. Thank you.